Alright YouTube, what is going on? It is Conflict Nerd Callum here today, bringing you another episode of my Airline Tycoon Let's Play. Today we're starting off episode number 7, we're on to, I can't believe we're on to episode 7 already. It's just like I started this series the other day, but it is time to get things underway and... See if we can continue pretty much. My aim, like after editing the previous episodes, my aim is to really just get Berlin and London so so successful that we start to make a lot of money out of it. That is really what I'm wanting to do, and I'm also wanting to, I guess, just raise that cash stack, raise it from like the current 2.7 million up into probably 5 million, if not more. So I don't know why we continued with the briefing there, but let's go ahead and see what we've got to play with. So right now, as we can see, Potsdam. Potsdam, I kind of mucked up a little bit, to be honest. I mean, we are making a bit of money, but the plane is in the air for so long that it's just, it's just a bit of a waste. So... We're going to leave that for the time being, however I might be able to pick something up if we run back down to cargo and see if we can slot something in because the plane is going to be in the air for what looks about 17 hours flying from Manila, which is the capital of the Philippines, some wonderful geography in there, to Chicago, so that is just losing us money, so we might as well try and do something, you know, though strangely... It is actually a distance of 13,000 kilometers, which the plane obviously can't do, so it must stop to refuel, which that is probably why I'm guessing it is taking so long, but I don't even know if it's got the distance to get over, which I'm assuming it's going over the Pacific Sea, but I'm not really at all sure, but anyway, let's move on. So, what I want to do today is go ahead and improve basically the Berlin-London route. So going ahead and looking at the schedule here, basically all it is is the London Berlin. So right now, as we can see this morning, I think we've pretty much filled up the schedule non-stop and it's just going to stay this way, to be honest. So I'm just going to go ahead and add in some more. Now the problem is we do have a lot of gate issues just because this plane is in action so much or this route is in action so much that we do have a few gate issues, but it's good to spread it out, I guess, and give the plane a bit of rest. But I do like to go ahead and try and, I guess, just fill the... Fill the books as much as possible, and that's what I'm going to go ahead and try and do while we do not have any gate issues. Though that might change when we start to fill up the pots down. But anyway, let's go ahead and have a look at the big figure, I guess. So right now you can see that 14 there. That 14 means so much to me. If you've not seen the last three episodes, then basically when you rent a route, which we're renting here, the Berlin-London route, then the route must have a capacity minimum of 10%. But now we've managed to achieve that, which is absolutely wonderful. And now we do not need to worry about losing that route like we did with our London, New York in the last episode. Thank God that is, I guess, dealt with now. We don't need to worry about that. So hopefully soon, which I'll maybe do tomorrow, we can start to raise the prices of that route because that's what I would really, really like to do and start making money from that because I believe right now, see, this is the warning here. You currently only use 6%, which is now up to 14. This is an old letter, by the way, so do not worry of the routes. If you don't utilize at least 10% within 10 days, your rights to fly this route will be revoked. So we don't need to worry about that anymore, which is great. So with that done, we just need to go ahead and as you can see, I am losing money on every single flight. It's not a lot of money, but mind you, but it is money which I'm losing. So I need to go ahead and turn that into profit to actually make it viable. So we'll wait probably another day until we change the ticket prices and then we'll go from there. Anyway, so from Monday onwards, I need flights, and one thing I do want to announce is that I have a brand new mouse, by the way, and it is a silent mouse, so hopefully you'll not hear any of the repetitive clicking, and I don't really know if it was annoying people, but especially in this game and uh, the other game I'm playing right now, Transport Fever, which I hope you're watching that series, by the way, wonderful series, it is, it was just annoying me a lot, so I thought, you know what, let's go ahead and up the quality and let's get a silent mouse, and that's what we've done. Anyway, so I'm looking for anything, absolutely anything from Monday onwards, which will give us a bit of profit. I'm not really seeing anything, to be honest. This one here isn't that bad, actually, London, Stockholm, but that's on Sunday. And of course, our plane can't do that. We can do that London to Barmuda on the Tuesday, so we'll take that. Like, going forward, I only really want to take profitable flights, so that's what I'm really going to do. We're going to run along here to the cargo depot and see what we can get ourselves, if there's anything special from Monday onwards. Again, though, we have that limit of 24 tons, unfortunately. So going ahead and looking at that, that would be an absolutely wonderful flight to do. However, we can't do that because 40 tons is just a bit too much, and that's why I'm half starting to think of saving up for some form of new plane anyway. 
Unfortunately, we can only take this, and that is not very... It's not really what I'm after, to be honest at all. We could take it, actually, but it's not going to tie in with Barmuda. So I want something that will work in with Barmuda. So we're going to run back into the office, and we're actually going to go shopping today, so I don't have to go to the office so much, because we almost run back to the office, and we run back up to here into our flight planner, but there's no point in really dealing with that if we don't have to. So we might as well go ahead and buy a laptop and save ourselves the time. So as you can see here on Monday, it's probably not going to do much to be honest. It's going to lose 56,000 flying out to Barmuda, but then it's going to make us 217,000. So that'll be a little bit of profit, which is good. Bar that though, we're not actually going to be making a lot of profit over the next few days. And that's why we need to turn this into money as of tomorrow. So as we can see, 126, that is full, which is good. We can start going ahead, and that's maybe an option for Monday, actually, to start putting some of these onto our bigger plane, because the Potsdam can obviously carry, I believe it's like 196, or no, it's 180, just 180. So we could go ahead and possibly do that and carry even more passengers going forward. But let's go ahead and let's do some shopping. I need to do some shopping, not done shopping in a very, very long time actually, there should be laptops in stock and that's what I'm after first of all. So let's go ahead and grab one of these, only cost 10,000 which is good. So that is one of these purchases and that will make our lives much, much easier. So anything else we can buy just out of curiosity which is like cool. A cell phone costs too much and I'm not really going to get much use. We've already got a uh, Philofax. Liqueur comes in handy actually when you go ahead and give that to the crane driver, I believe, of the... And this is all to do with what the items, their purpose actually. The items, I believe, if you go ahead and give the liquor to the crane driver in the cargo hangar, which we were just in, he'll give you something special, but I can't remember what it is, or he gives you another item, so... But anyway, what we're going to do is we're just going to jump out here for the time being. So let's go ahead and open this up and just see how it looks in a second however i want to go ahead and just see so we've only got one flight in action it's good to see another airline finally has a flight in action that is honey airlines which just people don't seem to be flying i don't really understand that so if we go ahead and look here our passenger numbers are double everyone else our flight numbers as well their flight numbers are hardly progressing maybe two or three per video literally whereas i'm obviously going ahead and flying loads and loads they do have a bit more money than me overall but, uh, well, not even, to be honest, but they do have more of their own shares, which we do need to go ahead and do as well. So looking at this here, this basically just allows us to do everything in the office. So as you can see here, we've got our planes, which we can go ahead and select and just see what we can go ahead and acquire on our routes. It tells me all the information that I need, for example, how many passengers are on, the ticket price, that sort of stuff. So it's absolutely ideal, it means I don't have to run back to the office as much. It's also got a list of airports, which we do have that in the office. Not very useful though. We've also got the information, which use against is a very, very useful one to have there. That's pretty much all it does, but it is definitely going to help us out when we're going ahead and, I guess, inquiring about flights at air travel. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the bank, and it looks like we just made a bit of money. I'm guessing that must have been on the Manila, or not Manila, sorry, that must be on the flight from, yeah, New Delhi to Manila. And that must be making us quite a bit of money. It looks like our share prices have dropped quite a lot, which is not good. So, and that means our company is... I always right-click backs and go back into the shop. So our share prices have dropped so much. Like, they used to be the highest shares, but now it looks like they're near enough the lowest. So, and I'm really not at all sure why that is. So, it's because they're all selling shares. That's the thing, is what they're doing, is they're selling shares. But I want to keep a hold of my own airline, so... I mean, it looks like they have 35%, 72%, and 72% of their own airline. So, it's not that I'm buying it, but uh, someone else must be. So, that's a possibility which we could do. So, let's go ahead and inquire about that, maybe. I would like to sell some stock. But then I don't really think I do want to do that. I need to look into this financial stuff, to be honest. Interestingly, I want to see the, what is the maximum loan I can take out. So, I would like to take out a loan. And then what is it? So the maximum is at 1,700 and, or 1,750,000. Sometimes I just forget to say numbers as well, which is a bit stupid. So that is, it's okay, but it's not going to get me enough to fly a plane or buy a new plane anyway to fly. 
If we do go ahead and buy a new plane, we'd probably land up selling one of our planes, but I just don't feel it's really worth it right now. One thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to buy some more of my own stocks, because I think that's worth it, So, and I can't even do that. So we could go ahead and buy maybe other airline stocks, but for the time, what I think we're going to do is we're going to run back up to the office, and then we're going to call it a day there. Of course, as it is the weekend, we can't do any advertising, which is a real shame. Anyway, so let's end the day there, and let's go ahead and hopefully there's no sabotage incidents. We've added quite a bit of security, so hopefully sabotage incidents are really going to drop now. Our image is at 19%, still slowly going up, I guess you could say. Our personnel is down though, so we need to work probably on that a little bit. Planes are in great condition, which is good to see. So let's go ahead and cancel the briefing, and let's go ahead and start to raise the price of some of these flights I guess you could say. So we have lost what maybe 350,000 overnight. These planes are still near enough all full which is great to see. So let's go ahead and start upping the price of these flights. So let's go ahead and change it to flight cost. So the ticket price goes up a little bit. It's not too much to be honest but I'm glad to hopefully start to bring in profit which is good going forward. So that's going to lose 12,000. Hopefully this next flight here should in general, I'm hoping not, it, sh it should hopefully at least come out even, if not, give us a profit. So that's what I'm hoping for. And what I think I'm going to do tomorrow is I'm just going to stick as a trial. Looking at Monday during the day tomorrow on the Bitterfeld, there's a flight leaving at, what, 7am and then it's arriving back in at 4 o'clock. Hold up, that can't be right. No, so that must be 8am and arrives back at 4 o'clock. So... ATM, we don't want to go ahead and have a clash, so why don't we go ahead, we need to be back, we need to be leaving here at a certain time, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly from London at approximately 6am, and then you're going to fly back, so I guess there's a bit of a two hour gap there, I guess you could say, I'm going to push that back, can we, no we can't, that's an annoying thing, why is that so annoying, it's just... I'm really tempted to buy another gate actually, so I just want to see how many people would land up going on a London-Berlin route, which isn't the exact same time as a flight on the Bitterfeld, however it is similar, so I want to see if they both fill up and maybe see if it's a good idea to go ahead and start to maybe put some of the London-Berlin flights onto our larger Potsdam plane. Anyway, so another strike, uh, that's going to be 10 hours, now that's a big deal, so I need to go ahead and sort this out. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump next door and we're going to go ahead and do what I don't want to have to do, but I'm going to have to increase the salary of all employees by 10%. So I'm sure that'll stop them striking then. So I think that's really what I wanted to do and I'm glad that's happened. So hopefully they won't strike anymore because the last one was only for like two hours, but that one... It was just unnecessarily long, that's 10 hours, so that's going to eat into profits, it's going to eat into image, all that sort of stuff, which we just want to avoid, really. Anyway, so let's go ahead and see what is happening in the skies. Nothing much there, and again, right now, we're on routes from the very expensive loss, which we've already taken on the chin, to be fair. Uh, we're about to make a little bit of money flying back from Chicago to London, but let's go ahead down to air travel and see what we can, I guess, get into our schedule. So first of all, let's go ahead and open up the laptop because I can't even remember what was on the schedule there and it's not this is what I'm needing. Uh, let's go ahead and just close out of this very quickly and let's go back into our flight schedule. So we're looking at the Potsdam. So it's from Tuesday onwards really we need something. So Tuesday onwards we need something. So we'll jump into here. Tuesday onwards, something which is going to get me a lot of money. Overall, there's really nothing that's going to get me a lot of money, to be honest. I'm tempted to take this Dakar to London. Uh, that'll be until Saturday, so we can fit that in anywhere, to be honest. Just looking at some smaller flights here, I might go ahead and do that short one, maybe the London to Dublin, because uh, that's actually got a decent premium. London, Palma, Mallorca, that's a shout as well. London Dakar, hold up, there's two London Dakars, so what did I take? That's got to go specifically on Monday, which I'm not free on Monday, I'm only free from Tuesday onwards, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, get it to Dublin, London as well, because that's extremely short, and we'll run back up to the office just to schedule them in. I think I'd rather schedule flights in, in my office, but I'd rather just do the checking on my laptop, that's what the laptop's really there for. 
Anyway, so, okay, this has to be on Monday, which we can fit it in no problem, so we'll just fit you in there. So it's going to lose 6,000 flying from London to Dublin, but you'll make 29,000, so little bit of a profit, not too large a profit, but it's not bad. And then we've got till Dakar on Saturday, so it's going to make us 129,000 and we're going to lose 46,000 flying out there, so at least it's making some money. Maybe not the best money, but it is making some money, and... I think it'll do there on Wednesday morning. So that sort of half fills the flight up. The Potsdam is never going to be as full as it once was with the London New York charters until it gets another route, which I don't even know if it will get its own route. It might use the Berlin route going forward. I don't really know what's going to happen to it. So do expect to see a lot of gaps on this, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we're losing money if the plane's on the ground, because we know from a lot of flights that we've taken before that you can often land up just losing money. Um, just because some of the flights you think are actually amazing because you're trying to fill in all the gaps and that sort of stuff in your schedule it doesn't really land up being profitable and you sometimes even make a loss so I want to avoid that and I only want to take the profitable flights that's really what I want to do anyway so what we're going to do I think is we're going to call it a day there there's some more mail which we might as well go ahead and check so that is just an advert it looks like and that is the strike, which I think we've dealt with now. So I think all is good on that front. So we'll go ahead and skip forward into Monday, into day 26. So it looks like I can't cancel the briefing, which is kind of annoying actually. We'll continue into the briefing and I guess we'll we'll deal with the issue. It looks like Sunshine Airlines has a, a marker which I have never, ever, ever seen before. So let's go ahead and learn about what this is. I'm afraid I have bad news. There's been a sabotage incident at Falcon Lines. Employees were talked into going on strike. That's an awful way to do business. I have irrefutable proof that Sunshine Airlines is responsible for that incident. In the interest of my airport, I am not going to report you to the police. At least not if you pay a fine to Falcon Lines. You agree? That's good. But I'm warning you, don't ever try anything like that again. And on to the next topic. Right, okay, so I think we can just skip the rest of that. So interestingly, and long last, there was a sabotage incident, which we will go into the sabotage room, not this episode, but next episode. I need to do more reading. I'll do more reading for next episode, and we'll do a lot of new stuff next episode. This episode, I just want to focus on the London to Berlin route. But it was Sunshine Airlines, which, if anything, I've actually got the closest contact with out of all the other airlines in the airport I guess they were sabotaging us and they got a fine of a million dollars which actually came into my bank account which I can't complain about don't get me wrong we probably have lost a bit of money but definitely not a million pounds from these sabotage incidents so at least that has I don't mind compensation to be honest so I'm quite happy with that and that'll definitely help towards I guess working towards a new plane anyway so the big question is how much are we losing on this flight? So, as you can see, they're all still full, which is good. What is the passenger numbers? So, it looks like 100 there, then 89 passengers, then 126, which is interesting. We're still making a loss, though, which is a shame. But, overall, I'm quite happy to see how everything is doing. Let's go ahead and just check what's the route capacity. I don't want it to drop back down so it's continually going up so it's at 17 percent my worry was if i raise the ticket prices then the route demands would drop which i'm glad we've avoided that so and i'm hoping that uh this trial here so that's taken 180 passengers but it's not even made a profit which is insane so that plane is full literally full and we're about to find out as well that's also taking 180 passengers so but again that's so strange it's not giving me a profit so looks like we'll need to up the ticket prices again however i don't want to do that in this episode i'll do that in the next episode so now we do have some spare money though i'm going to upgrade part of this flight slowly but surely so we'll go ahead and upgrade the comfort to three stars the ambience costs like 1.2 million so i think we'll just avoid that for now we'll maybe upgrade the dinners as well so we'll go ahead and do that and that'll take a bit of money out of our bank accounts however that will be it's an investment at the end of the day so i can't really complain about it very quickly just go ahead and check the flight board for today i don't know why you ran back upstairs there but there we go so we've got a lot going on so it's all uh looks like mainly berlin literally to berlin all day today and we've also got a flight out to 
London as well. We're going to go ahead and try and fill in a wee bit more of the schedule, I guess, for our pot stamp here. So from Wednesday onwards, you need to do something. So let's go ahead and see if there's anything nice in here from Wednesday onwards. That Bermuda flight looks very tempting. I might take that. And it could also, oh, that New York one. We're definitely taking that until Friday. And we could tie that in with... Barmuda as well because you could fly out to New York and then on the way back you can fly via Barmuda. I think that's definitely a good thing to do so we can go ahead and do that and this is the great advantage of having the big plane free is that you don't really have to worry about any clashes I guess you could say. So we're going to go ahead and put the Barmuda in there if there's room at any gates. There we go so that'll do so you'll lose 62,000 flying out. What am I doing? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's put this in here. If we can get free gates, which is going to be a challenge in itself. So that'll do it there. So it looks like we're going to make not as much as I thought, actually, because the penalty was quite high. But it's still a very good profit, don't get me wrong. About 750,000 flying from London to New York. I'll then make the short flight, which is from New York to Bermuda overnight from Wednesday into Thursday, losing 15,000. That'll make 164,000 on the way back. So it looks like Wednesday and Thursday are going to be quite profitable days because we do have some money coming in that morning as well, which will be good. Overall, Potsdam's actually doing quite well. I was a bit worried about it, but it is doing good. Anything from Thursday onwards. That is interesting. If Sunshine Airlines could hurry up and move out the way, you are a sabotage airline, so I don't really deal with you. Uh, but we're looking for Thursday onwards. So that's a Wednesday until Sunday there to Warsaw. That's not a bad flight, don't get me wrong, but I don't know if I want to take it. Going back out there to Saudi Arabia, that's a very good shout actually. That's on Wednesday though, which we, unfortunately we cannot do. Wednesday flight, and that's a Thursday flight to Atlantis, which I don't feel it's really worth that. I'm really, really, really tempted to take the the Warsaw flight for until Sunday, which I think we'll go ahead and do. So let's go ahead and grab that, and let's try and schedule this in. And the good thing is, right, okay, I never knew that happened. That's a real shame, so I guess we'll have to return to the office then. I guess you maybe only get so much battery per day or something, because I, I would spend my whole time on that, literally. Let's go ahead and schedule you in, and with this Warsaw flight, we can schedule in probably a London to Berlin, because Berlin and Warsaw, in terms of the cities in this game, are actually quite close, so... That'll make us 56,000, which we can do at any time. So what I'm thinking about doing is moving you into there. And then we'll go ahead and grab in a London to Berlin, maybe. In there. So that would work on Thursday. So it's going to go from London to Berlin. The short flight, which is only going to lose 6,000 from Berlin to Warsaw. And it's going to make 56,000 on the way back. So another nice 50,000 profit there, which I'm happy to see. Anyway, Bitterfeld, let's see how we're doing on the next flight. So again, 126, but again, it's just not enough to make me a profit. Full planes, but not profit. And it's starting to annoy me. Again, you two were both negative, even though you had the maximum amount of passengers. So a real shame, but nothing much we can do about it. What I want to do is jump next door and actually go ahead and continue to promote the route, though. Even though the route's image is probably extremely high, I just want to go ahead and help myself out. So let's go ahead and speak with the advertiser here and I want to go ahead and improve the one of my routes basically. It's this route here. So right now it's at, it's got an image of 89%. So maybe we should stop that because it's near enough maxed out. So what I think I can do now is I think I can raise the ticket prices all the way to the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back out here actually. Just ignore that for the time being. We're going to jump back into here. We're going to very quickly go ahead and raise the prices again because I'm comfortable with the plane being the best it can. It has an extra attendant as well. It's got an image of that good. The overall airline image is quite good. I think we can go ahead and raise it to standard with no problem. First class, that might be a bit of a worry, but hopefully now that we've changed the ticket prices... We should make a profit, but we won't know that really until tomorrow. So let's go ahead and skip forward to tomorrow because there's no mail. So let's go ahead and jump forward and see how things go. So overnight we made a bit of money, no sabotage incidents, which is good. So we'll go ahead and cancel the briefing. We'll then jump into here, our lovely flight planner, and let's see how we're doing. So 86 passengers, 111 passengers. 126, so what I expected to be honest, and we're making a profit for the first time. 
However, it's not a very good profit, which kind of did concern me to be honest, but I can't really do too much about that, but at least it is a profit. If we start to go ahead though and put flights as well onto this pot stamp here, then we will start to make a profit overall, which is good. But the real money now is gates. Gates is going to be the problem going forward. As you can see, I would ideally like to fit one in here, but I just don't know if that's going to happen. That works then actually, so there'll be an extra flight on Wednesday, and we need to pretty much just go ahead and jam-pack this. Totally jam-pack this. And saying that, that will conflict with some of the Potsdam flights, so some stuff will have to be moved, but that'll do for the time being. So let's see if we can go ahead and make any improvements on the Bitterfeld. Looks like on Saturday we probably can. Can probably get an extra flight in there. So as you can see, it's definitely taking a grid formation, which again will be altered by the pot stand. But overall, it's really good to see some really good stuff there. For the final part of this episode, I want to go ahead and just inquire about planes. What time is the museum open? The museum's not open just yet. So let's go ahead and just check on the flight board what is happening today. So again, it's pretty much just all London to Berlin or Berlin to London. However, there is a Barmuda flight in action as well. I want to go ahead and look at the Potsdam for Friday onwards. So we're looking for Friday onwards. And I want to start in the cargo terminal because I want to see if it can give us anything nice. So we're looking for anything which is, first of all, 24 tons, which again, there's nothing. That's just really, really frustrating. So I guess we'll jump out of here for the time being. I'll go up to last minute very quickly, actually, and just see if last minute has anything for Friday onwards. Then what I want to do is jump into the museum to just wrap this episode up and see what the price of planes are right now, because they, they always have different sort of planes coming in, so... That there's got no penalty, though I know we can't take that, which is a real shame. Uh, Friday here we've got a flight to Moscow, which I really don't think that's going to be that profitable. Even though it's a short distance, we might take it however. Uh, we've also got a Madrid, that flight's not going to be very profitable. Helsinki, that's not going to be very profitable. London to Berlin, that will definitely be profitable, so we might as well take that. That's, no, that's on Wednesday though, we can't do that. We can take this London to Reykjavik until Sunday though, that should give me some profit. So let's go ahead and grab that as the final flight of the episode. Let's go ahead and run upstairs and you can't even hear my mouse anymore, that is the great thing about it. Mouse is being a wee bit slow in responding at times though, but it will get there. So let's go ahead and jump into the Potsdam and let's just fit you in there I guess if we can without any gate clashes. So we'll fit you in there for Friday morning and you will make us $75,000, which is wonderful to see. So let's go ahead now and run along to the museum and just inquire about planes. Not that I'm thinking about it this episode, but maybe in two episodes, two to three episodes time, we might go ahead and make the leap of faith. So this plane is in very good condition and is the price that I expect. And I'm sure it is, don't get me wrong, but I don't have 63 million dollars don't have 20 million dollars and also don't have 29 million dollars which is a real shame however it's not a lost cause don't worry uh, a lot of these have got much faster speeds as we can see that can carry 550 passengers which is absolutely mental that would be the dream plane but we just don't have a uh, 20 million it'd be wonderful to have it's a good year as well the thing is if we are buying second hand planes and i don't want the year to be too far back and the reason for that is because you have to pay a lot more maintenance costs and that requires quite a bit of money especially if the plane is like pre probably like pre-1990 you're gonna have to pay a lot of money which is something that if we do buy a plane we're probably not gonna have a lot of so I want to go and see how much we can actually raise by selling a plane now I would only sell a plane if I was going to go ahead and get another plane back but I don't know how much we'd get for them. So the Bitterfeld would get 3.4 million, which is a fair amount, to be honest. It is a good plane, though. So it's I don't know if I want to do that. We'll have to wait and see. Interestingly, it says passengers 168 there, which it's not. It's only 126. And then the Potsdam. Unless... That's strange as well. You don't have 240 seats. You really don't. But I get 5.7 million for that. Why do you say you have more passenger seats when you don't. You don't have 168, and I know that, so that's a strange one as well. I need to go ahead and investigate that, so interesting. I would get quite a lot of money for both of them, actually. I think that's a, a quite a fair price, not going to lie about that, but 
I think I need to just have my eyes in a plane first. I think we need to get up to like 10 million before we really go ahead and invest. Anyway, it looks like we're consistently making profit on this, which is good finally. 6,000 daily, I'm pretty sure. I can't remember how much it costs to rent actually. If we very quickly just run back along here. So looks like daily we're going to be making around about 30,000 with those ticket prices. So daily right now, this route costs us... Well, it costs 600,000 overall, so break that down, that's about 20,000 a day, need enough. So, yeah, we are making a profit overall on the route long last, which is good to see. That is also one of our planes going past in the background. I did see a comment about that. Basically, if you do look out here, you will see planes going down the runway. And if we look in the distance, actually, we should hopefully see in about a second time, or a few seconds, I guess, the plane actually going along the proper runway and taking off. However, I don't see it appearing, which is strange. Maybe it's coming in, or maybe it's just arrived. I think it would be departing, though, so... But, oh well. Let's go ahead and check the flight board again. Nothing much happening. One thing I do want to do before the end of this video, though, is actually just check up on the capacity thing, because... What, do the planes maybe need to get upgraded to see their full capacity, or... Because if I go in here and I go Bitterfeld, it's 126. What does the brackets mean? What do the brackets mean? So I think we need to go ahead and I'll do a little bit of investigating into that and go ahead and maybe unlock a bit extra capacity because that would be great. But I'll do some reading into that and apply that in for the next episodes. Anyway, that is all for this episode. So I hope you have enjoyed watching this episode of my airline tycoon let's play. Please leave a like rating, subscribe if you are new around here. That's all for this video. So thanks very much for watching. My name is Conflict Now Callum. And I'm out.